Welcome back to another episode of Senior Fights. Fights his breakdown. I'm Chad Vasquez. Logan Love. And we are breaking down another episode of Kengan Ashura. And we're looking back at my man, the King Stranglers, Cosmo Imai, versus the executioner, Akoya Seishu. I will warn you all, this does get a bit, uh, a bit messy. Wait, how messy? Very messy, yeah. all right? It's a cool fight though, so we'll just see how Cosmo perseveres through some very deep waters, and it's gonna be a good fight. So, let's get to it. All right, let's go. Okay, here we go. Nice little stare down. Just focused. Boom, okay. First technique. Oblique kick. All right. Very smart. Cosmo's doing a good job on using it to maintain the distance and stop his advancement. You see two MA fighters actually do a version of it. John Jones. Right. Who's actually well known for it. And his teammate, Holly Holm. Why don't we break that down right now? Akoya, Cosmo, fight starts. First thing we see is an oblique kick mm -hmm. from Cosmo to Akoya. Akoya was charging very quickly to Cosmo. What he does, he actually stops the advancement mm -hmm. using the balls of his foot right onto the thigh. Chad, question, why did he go for the thigh? Why not just go for the knee or something? Very good question. Cosmo's used to fighting, let's say, an MMA rule set. It is illegal oh. to hit the knee itself. But that's what makes this training a bit dangerous is that it's hard to be that accurate. John Jones, he's known for the oblique kick. He sometimes misses or right. by accident goes too low to the knee. So if you're gonna try this in your training, be careful. But what we see Cosmo do is he does it a light version. There's different variations. So the version he does is where it's just a light stop no. right there. It's actually a good harassment tool. So if, if I'm sparring here, I can use it to stop the advancement and later come on right. with, a, with a strike there. Cosmo uses it to stop the advancement of a Koya. Yeah, and of course, if they're wearing shoes, then it becomes almost like a weapon. Oh right? yeah, especially if you're working like a good variation where you're working on bringing yourself up and stomping right around the knee. Absolutely. A little stare down. Those beautiful eyes. You know, green eyes are the most rare eyes. Well, and Cosmo's a special person then. He yeah. is. Backs up, creates distance. All right, so now he's going to a grappling stance, which is interesting. So he's change up, charge, charge them, go around and, ooh, oh, okay. What was that, kidney shot? I think he just, Punch his heart, bend his body. Okay, and nice check, okay. So what's really cool in the beginning part of the fight is we start to see checking of kicks, light kicks. I'll have Logan do a light kick to me now. So you see the location, he's aiming for the thigh area, right? Very close to my crotch there, so that's kind of scary. Now, I wanna make sure I block that area. So when the kick comes, you see I bring my knee up just enough and I angle in the direction where the kick's coming from. Cosmo actually got caught on the outside and then he adapted with the second leg kick. A little demonstration here. Logan hits me with the outside kick, right? And now it goes for inside, and he checked very well. So that's a pretty cool thing to see in this fight. Chad, in Anderson Silva's fight, he broke his entire yes, leg, Yes, right? yes. From so the check. in certain cases in fighting, that's actually a perfect example. Right. And so versus Chris Weidman, their second fight. Right. So if you want to see how effective a leg check can be. That's gruesome. Very disgusting, but very interesting nonetheless, where as Anderson was trying to work these kicks, you do see Chris Lyman actually checking. Right. And there's one point where that connection happens and the shin bone just snap in half. He's blocking. So the reason why Koi is able to stop Cosmo's technique right now is because he actually studied Cosmo's last fight with Dudley. So he's reading his movements. His reflexes are super quick. That's actually the thing about his character. So now, see, he's trying to do his famous choke, right? But then, boom, and he blocks it. Because he knows he, he's, he's actually aware of that move. And that's actually a valid thing to do, to put your arm inside to stop triangle chokes. Why don't we bring it down right now? And how okay. do we escape a triangle when there's an arm inside? So when we broke down Cosmo versus Dudley, we saw right away one of his favorite techniques is the front triangle choke. Right. Now, Okoya has studied that fight, right. and so he's aware of it. So what he does that's actually valid is he gets an arm inside right. to stop the choke, and that's actually totally valid. But he doesn't use it to actually get out. So what we'll do is we'll demonstrate how you would break out of that triangle situation if you manage to get your arm inside. Now, he was standing. So the thing about standing when you're being held in that position is that all the weight's on your neck, so you'll naturally lean forward. So one thing he should have done probably is drop his knees to the floor so he could posture up. 
That's a big deal in getting out of the situation. He stood on his feet, right? So that's one mistake there. Now, from being on my knees, I can better posture up. And from here, I can start connecting my hands and start stretching outward and stretching my arm within the hip to create a break, okay? So this is one example of what he could have done. Another variation, if for some reason as he's doing this, this is not working, you could actually start also stretching your arm out and forcing yourself into a closed guard, right? Is it ideal? No, but it's better than being choking out. Oh wow, he's lifting him up. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, a guy that size. So now he could slam him right now, right? He, he can, yes. He's not doing it for some reason, but now, okay, nice cool transition back, and look at that, good use of the choke. That's actually a, like a very modern choke. That's a, right? actually good form there. Well done, creators. Now, I would say though, Cosmo could have actually done something better than climb to the back. Did you notice that he had two hands on Akoya's hand? What he could have done is go to an arm bar. Yeah, now Logan will bring his foot over my other, other ankle. And exactly, from here, he actually had what he needed to break the arm. Bring the, uh, the heels down to my neck. And as you see, Logan bridge on his left elbow and pull down. And right there, that would have been a much faster and better transition in that position with a coil, just kind of having his arm aside. Cosmo should have went for the arm bar. Ooh. Oh, he stabs through his arms. Jesus Christ. Now it's getting real. All right, and goes through for an eye poke. Whoa. So now he's adding some new elements to the fight and it's throwing off Cosmo. And yeah. now we're entering a new element here. So look at this, as he grabs his leg, so it's like a single leg mm -hmm. position, you would think he's gonna take him down. Right. But instead, he bit him. Yeah. Jeez. Nice little bite there. And bites actually do affect a fight. And uh, it's, it's why it's argued against combat sports here. He just ripped a piece out. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's gonna leave a mark, Chad. Did he just spit Put it, it out? out? Like a boss. All right, but now he's terrified. I would be terrified. Yeah. Guy in a gi, no pants, coming at me, hitting my leg. Ugh. All right, so so now there's wild punches. Yep, yeah, and Cosmo is, is freaking out. And I yeah. would freak out too. Yeah, and 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 okay, so now we're looking at fear, and you actually you do see us in any combat sport or mixed martial arts. You can almost see the will of a fighter, right? Slowly draining as they move, and you see kind of panic or sometimes just slowly hesitation. So right, right here, we're just seeing. He looks like a different fighter. Right? Yeah, fighting is largely right. mental, like 95% of it. So sure. here he's breaking. And this is where it gets a little disturbing. This is where it gets disturbing? Yeah, he's paying down. Now he's stabbing with his thumb. Oh, man. Now, okay, obviously that's not real, right? But uh, I mean, Logan, that could be also like a nice situation there. For sure. Oh, he's just plunging it in. Yep. All um, right. So this is interesting here. In all of the breakdowns we've done in the past, like the man from nowhere or kill zone, you're seeing like knife dueling, which mm. is I have a knife, the other guy has a weapon, two weapons out. And they're like, here's my weapon. I'm gonna show it to you. And the other guy goes, all right, that's great. Here's my weapon. I'm gonna show it to you. In a real fight with weapons, that's not usually how it would be. It would most likely be something like this ambush. So you have mm. duel and you have ambush. Most likely when you deal with weapons, you're dealing with ambush. And we're talking, I don't know the percentage, but I would think that greater than 75% of the time, it is not dual. It is not some guy taking a knife going like, I have a knife, I want you to know I have a knife, and I'm gonna hurt you with this knife. Because what are you gonna do? You're gonna do the two on one or something. Like yeah. you, you do the two on one as we did in the hunted. But here, Akoya shows a proper deployment of the weapon. He doesn't pull out his weapon for any other purpose except to use it. The other thing that this is interesting, you actually don't see this, but you have two fighters here fighting. In a real fight, you always have to be worried about some sort of third party. Oh uh, yeah. Right? So if you're in, let's say, a dominant position, you're in mount, right? And you're, you're raining down punches. What you're not seeing is the guy's friend coming behind you with, you know, a knife or baseball bat or, or even rock. Yeah, and look, I'm sure some of you are probably interested on like, well, what would you do if you're in a situation. So we can try to put this down right now, but I will say this is a very bad situation. Right. I mean, the chance of escaping is, is just, is it's tough. So let's try to break this down and talk about it. So here we're seeing some more elements of dirty fighting essentially. It looks like there's some sort of muffle happening. A muffle, generally speaking, is when the hand covers the nose and the mouth. And what happens is obviously you're, you're blocking off oxygen to your opponent, 
but also it causes a panic effect. And that's essentially what we're seeing here. So as I do that to Chad, Chad, I'm gonna muffle you. All right, this gets weird. As I do the muffle, he immediately wants to protect himself, which allows me to do a deployment. I don't have a bionic thumb or a superpowered thumb. However, with a bladed weapon, and this is a major danger for people that do, you know, they do a lot of sport fighting. You do have to be cognizant of the fact that the person may be armed. And in a real fight, the person might not deploy their weapon until it's too late. Because he was armed only with the superpower thumb, which was pretty gross, but still effective, he was only able to get so much depth in. So once he dismounted, uh, the amount of damage that he could cause Cosmo was limited. If he had a true weapon, the fight would be over. Here, Akoya's forearm is so large that he's able to do a muffle with his forearm itself. That enabled Cosmo to bite his forearm. Chad, do not bite my forearm. I will not, I promise. Thank you. All right, so he comes in here, he bites the forearm, but the question is, is does that really make a difference? With the thumb, yeah, I guess it does, right? But with a knife, it doesn't make a difference because by the time I feel the pain, I've already launched three, four pretty significant knife attacks. Then the other question is, is would someone as jacked and as amped up on adrenaline and strength as Akoya was in a fight, in the heat of battle, would a bite be enough for him to dismount? Hard to say, right? Yeah. It's really hard to say. You have a lot of adrenaline going on. But I will say though that it, it, if I was armed, it wouldn't really matter because at that point, if I only had two seconds to do it, that's plenty enough time for me to cause some serious permanent damage. How can I escape that position? Well, in the Kangon breakdown, Kano versus Akubo, I did demonstrate a mount escape where you get two on one in the arm. That could possibly be a strategy in this case here. So a quick little demonstration. I won't roll Logan over. I'll just show just the first part of the mechanics. So in a situation where I'm grappling, I'm fighting, and then suddenly a weapon gets involved and I get ambushed, the only logical escape I can think of is the mount escape where we roll a partner over, where we get a two on one. But the thing is, use your knee to get the hands on the floor still. If the hand comes up, using my knee to get something back going will help stop that stabbing arm to get to work on me. And I'll try to find a way to get either this arm or probably even better, this arm, honestly, to control it, step over, and roll my partner over. That's what I think would probably be the best option in the scenario on getting out of that situation. But I would say in a real situation where you're getting mounted, the chance of getting out is super low. Right. That's the only strategy I think that could possibly work, in my opinion, where you're getting mounted with a knife and like what to do. Use your knee on the tailbone, get hands on the floor, and try to grab an arm to reverse position as soon as possible. Cosmo is biting back on Akoya. He's now mixing up his tactics. Now Cosmo is gonna come at Akoya again, but with a new tactic and a headbutt. Nice. Okay, so Cosmo, he's changing his strategy. He goes to a fake shot, but then goes right to a headbutt on purpose. A good fight that actually captures that in real life is uh, Matt Serra versus Matt Hughes. It was right. a situation where Matt Hughes almost lost the fight because right. as Matt Serra came up, by accident, I, I, yeah, we don't know, but allegedly by accident, but uh, a headbutt happened and that's what almost dropped him. Gotcha. So let's see what happens next. All right, going back to his offensive, his beautiful combinations of strikes, kicks. Boom. All right, ate that one. It's all right, give him time. Just how Cosmo fights. He's, he needs to fix his hair. It, yeah, and actually, I, I think it's fixed. Look at it. It actually went back by itself. This right. is a whole new Cosmo now. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Once you fix that hair. Yeah. Now he's going. A little cut and cheat there. He's just right. taking it, though. He's not. He's unfazed. Yep. Oh. All right, it's about to choke Simon. Single arm lift. Yeah. And bro, right in the eye. Oof. Cosmo's playing a little dirty himself. And so now he can't see on his right eye, Akoya. Cosmo disappears on that side. He thinks it's the ref and he just allows him to go. Okay, all right, so Cosmo, eye gouge on Akoya. Akoya can't see well on one side and he smartly moves in that direction. Right. And honestly, in MMA, for example, you do see situations where whether through a punch or by accident with an eye poke, you know, you have a fighter who can't see an eye. And so that becomes a very good spot to start throwing punches, for example. Right. Cosmo uses to climb to his back. Mm. Now, I learned the hard way in one of my main fights that when you go on your opponent's back, when standing, you get slammed. Happened to me, I still managed to finish the fight, but you know, in a situation where maybe you're on the street or there's hard surface, 
that could be a bad idea. So right. what we'll look here as we look at the fight, we're gonna see Cosmo start receiving punishment while being on his back, like so, right oh. to the wall. Well, that's a hard surface. Yes. So why don't we go over another nice little cool technique mm -hmm. to show how to bring someone down to the floor and proceed to a back take that is much more higher percentage and low risk. Okay, let's do it right now. Cosmo climbs Okoya's back and proceeds to the choke, but what happened is he starts getting slammed. What I wanna do is just present another option of what he could have done mm -hmm. to take the fight to the ground without getting hurt the way he did and proceed to a back take, which is what he was looking for the whole time. Right. We're gonna show a, a Taitoshi from a back control situation. Instead of just jumping on top here, we could have stuck with waist control. Now, I'm gonna move myself in this direction and use the momentum to switch my legs in a stance that'll allow me to trip Logan over to the floor. So it looks like this. From here, as I am walking, I can switch and pull him over like so. And now look everyone, there's back exposure with the arm that's over the waist. I can just turn to now a claw grip and move my knees in front here. So I'm blocking him. And now from here, I can keep my hands opposed, bring my left knee over. And as soon as my foot touches the floor on my left side, I switch my stance, knee up towards the back. And with this claw grip, I can sit down and start pulling Logan up. And you can see my two free limbs come right inside to back control in ways we've seen from the past. So Chad, that's a higher percentage move? Yeah, it's definitely one of many. The Tai Toshi is a great move to hit from the back on bring someone down and creating back exposure right away. Right. So it's definitely one of my favorites. Getting slammed, getting slammed. Yep. How many times is he getting slammed? Many. Many times. Oof. All right, and that one. Yeah, the big risk too is like, you know, you, you can yeah, you, get hit you back in the head, head. Get knocked out yourself. And now, my, my experience, right to the floor. Ready, ready for it? And there goes Chad's journey. <laughs> Just <laughs> right to the floor, yep. Wait, who's out? Looks like it's Cosmo. <laughs> oh. Koya's walking away. Oh man. Definitely very upset. He did not want to bleed that much, but here we go. And right here, charging in at Cosmo. Just comes right to that submission. And what's gonna be? Boom, guillotine, which we went into detail in the Attack on Titan episode. Right. And so now he's just punching away. He's taking those rib shots. Yep. Actually, I think, aiming, again? I think he's aiming for the spot where he stabbed him. Oh. But Kyle's not letting go, and he's letting that baby sink in. And he ain't giving up. Kyle's on a whole new level mentally. He's just, I'm not letting go of this choke. Man, his arms must be burning. Mm. You see, actually, in Final Fantasy Fighters, actually, they really try to make that last ditch effort. And a lot of times, it doesn't really go well. Right. Because um, they burn out, right? But yeah, but then sometimes, though, you do see it where guys hold out, and it's a slow choke. But if you feel confident you have everything inside, you just gotta just hold out and wait till it kicks in, which it does here. Eyes are getting red. And, and done. Good night. Winner, Cosmo. Nice. Good job, buddy. Good job. Good job. That's my man. My man. I like it when the little guy wins. There you go. Want to go over some uh, new other details with guillotine since we overwent one version. We can have some fun with this. So the final thing we see that ends the fight is the guillotine choke. If you notice, Cosmo had just one arm around Okoya's neck, which allowed Okoya to have a free arm to punch. He was doing a classic one arm guillotine. So as I explained in the Attack on Titan breakdown, when you're doing a guillotine choke, you don't want to be flat. So one thing I will have to take away points for Cosmo is being flat while doing the choke. With that said though, I'll just demonstrate just a regular one arm guillotine here. So let's look at it. In this case, I don't have the arm. I have just the neck. And I'm just gonna transition to a close guard right now. And so he should be at an angle. But everyone, same thing. As I pull the legs towards me, I bring my hands up to his neck and I apply that squeeze pressure right there. Another cool choke I want to show you is what we'll call a power guillotine. And it's a way in how you connect your hands like so. Okay, so Cosmo had free hand. One thing he could have done is actually bring his hands, I'm gonna show it here, bring his hand up. So I'm gonna bring his hand upward above his shoulder line and connect. And from here, it's actually a very, very powerful connection on pushing the hand into the neck for a choke. So, demonstration. 
hand comes high up here, and I want it to connect. And I can actually lean my, my head back to make room for my hand and make that connection. Now, from a close guard here, I can push and squeeze. What's very cool about this variation is that you don't have to be in a close guard. Your actually legs can wrap around your partner's body in different ways. One cool example is, let's say Logan gets around my legs. So let's say my legs are here. I can just hold on and still push and squeeze for that choke. So that's another cool example that calls for done with that power guillotine, also known as a Mackenzie guillotine. So in the fight between Cosmo and Okoye, it was very interesting. We see the introduction of, let's just call dirty tactics, biting, eye gouging, stabbing, and how it affected the fight. It really just showed also, just for me, how cool Cosmo is and just dealing with the situation and how he was just brought to a whole new level of stress where he's used to fighting a certain way and now these new elements were challenging him, not just physically, but mentally. Now, there was a lot of critique on my part on his technique, things that he could have done. To be more exact, when we saw Cosmo go from that triangle arm arm situation to the back instead, one, it's, it's not that easy to do when you're in a situation where you have that and the guy you're fighting is standing. So he could have, like I said before, gone for an arm bar, but instead he went for the back. So it's just one example that could have been done better. My final grade for the scene is gonna be in A minus. If you haven't already, please go back and check out the Cosmo versus Dudley scene. And I'll see you guys another time. Peace.